Today, let us study the Word of God with a sermon titled, Our Almighty God. Let us take some time to study and understand why Almighty God had to diminish His power when He came to earth in the flesh. Let's take a look at Hosea chapter 6, verse 3. Let us acknowledge the Lord. Let us press on to acknowledge Him. As surely as the sun rises, He will appear. He will come to us like the winter rains, like the spring rains that water the earth. Let's go to verse 6. Here it is written, For I desire mercy, not sacrifice, an acknowledgement of God, rather than burnt offerings. This is the will of God. God is Almighty. And yet people try to understand God only from their own perspective. Then, let's see the testimony in the Bible about the great power of God. Let's go to Genesis chapter 1, verse 1. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. According to the Bible verse, who created the heavens and the earth? God did. Brothers and sisters, do you truly believe this? When the world was formless and empty, God created the heavens and the earth. In verse 4, can't we see God's work of creating light and darkness? God saw that the light was good. And what did He do? He separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness He called night. God made the light and darkness and separated the water above the expanse from the water below. Everyone, through this fact alone, we should be able to fathom and understand the great power of God. This powerful and almighty God is our Creator from the beginning, Elohim. In the book of Genesis, all the work of creation that God the Father and God the Mother carried out is recorded. God created the light and darkness, all kinds of trees, animals in the field, fish in the sea, birds in the air, and all kinds of fruit trees. All things were created by God, one by one. Then, how many different types of living organisms do you think God created on the earth? Scientists say that approximately 10 million species of living organisms exist on earth. Among the 10 million species, today I want to tell you about a tiny parasite. The word parasite doesn't sound positive and has a negative connotation. But a movie titled Parasite won the American Academy Award. Today, there is one story I would like to share with you about a parasite. Everyone, have you heard of an ant parasite? Ants are very small, but there are parasites that do many curious things inside the bodies of ants. Like humans, ants go to work in the morning and stop working in the evening. They have a set schedule. Sometimes, among the ants that have finished working, some leave their colony and suspend themselves at the end of a leaf. Ants rely on each other through communal living. So, it is very rare for an ant to do something independently. If an ant hangs on a leaf, it is because the parasite in its body is controlling its brain. Even though ants are communal insects, the ants infected with the ant parasite 
exhibit this abnormal behavior. The parasites trigger the ants to behave this way in order to go inside the body of a cow or sheep. Eventually, a cow or sheep swallows up the leaves along with the ants hanging from them. When the ants die, inside the cow's digestive system, these ant parasites quickly move to the animal's liver and lay eggs there. After some time, these eggs come out of the animal's body through its feces. Once they are outside, snails come and eat those feces along with the eggs of the ant parasites. Those eggs remain inside the body of a snail for some time and even go through the larval stage. Then they all rush to the snail's lungs to prepare themselves to come out of the snail. When the ant parasites that hatched out from the eggs move to the snail's lungs, the snail convulses and rolls around. As its lungs are tickled, the snail cannot sit still and it sneezes. At that moment, all the ant parasites come out from the snail's body covered in phlegm. I'm not trying to teach you science. The size of an ant's brain is smaller than a period. How small would the ant parasites be that are living in those ants? They are almost invisible. It's truly incredible how something so small can use its brain in such an incredible way. When the parasites come out from the snails, ants passing by see a pile of phlegm and mistakenly think that it is food. So the ants store the pile of phlegm and feed on it later. Actually, the liver of a cow or sheep is the parasite's home. So, they have a desire to return there. Whenever you see ants hanging at the edge of a leaf, you can understand that they are infected by ant parasites. Why am I telling you this story? Among the 10 million species of living organisms that God created, isn't it amazing how these ant parasites have a life cycle, even though they are so minuscule? Isn't God truly magnificent? Through His awesome power, God created everything from the most minuscule living organisms to the vast universe. How can we not be amazed by the awesome work of His creation? The world governed and created by God Almighty is truly amazing. All living creatures, whether they are microorganisms, human beings, or animals, are full of wonders. We marvel at this fact, thinking, how can this be? How can this tiny creature control the ant's brain to make it behave that way? Whose wisdom and power allowed this to happen? It is all by the awesome and mighty power of our God. Our God administers over 10 million species of living organisms. One by one, He created them all. God even gave the ant parasite the instinct to return to where it came from. Even human beings, whether they believe in God or not, they all have the innate desire to return to where they came from. Isn't this the reason why it is written in the Bible that God set eternity in the hearts of men? When we think about this matter, we can realize that those who say that there is no God are truly foolish. Who made all things as they are? When the parasites came into existence, they did not design their own life cycle. Entomologists wondered, ants are communal insects, but why do some leave their colony and behave so abnormally hanging at the tip of a leaf? They later discovered 
that the ants infected by the ant parasites were the only ones that were behaving abnormally. When cows or sheep graze on leaves, the ants are swallowed up together and end up in the animal's stomach. There, the parasites come out and lay eggs, which then hatch and come out of the animal's body through its feces. Can the parasites design this process by themselves? We can realize that God is the one who designed this kind of system. When we think about God's power to create all things and the amount of detail He put in them, we are truly amazed and cannot help but praise our God. We also realize that those who insist that there is no God are truly foolish. Through the complex and intricate design in everything that God created, we can feel how powerful and amazing our Creator God is. Let's see Psalms chapter 14, verse 1. The fool says in his heart, There is, what isn't there? No God. They are corrupt. Their deeds are vile. There is no one who does good. The Lord looks down from heaven on the sons of men to see if there are any who understand, any who seek God. All have turned aside. They have together become corrupt. There is no one who does good, not even one. Will evildoers never learn? Those who devour my people as men eat bread and who do not call on the Lord? There they are, overwhelmed with dread. For God is present in the company of the righteous. We come to understand that those who say there is no God are foolish. As for the living creatures, that exist in the invisible world. God granted them the ability and wisdom to carry out their own roles. The one who fulfills this work is our God. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. God created animals on the field and various kinds of plants and trees. God's work of creation is briefly summarized in the book of Genesis. When examining the 10 million species that God created, they all have different shapes and characteristics. It is the same with humans. As I always mention, there are no two members in Zion who have the exact same face. God did not create humans from a single mold. Rather, God created each person in a unique way, one by one. This is true even of the ant parasite. The scientific name for this parasite is Dicrocelium dendriticum. God created each minuscule living organism with so much consideration for their size, shape, and characteristics. Looking at this, I could not help but realize how much love God has poured out upon the earth that we are living in. This is why the most foolish person is the one who says that there is no God. After World War II, numerous people who witnessed the misery of war pondered, if God truly exists, how can such a war break out? Thinking that God does not exist, they even held a lecture on this topic. Among many lecturers, one astronomer said, For quite some time, I've been observing a far distant universe with the telescope. But I was not able to see God in any of the stars. Therefore, God does not exist. This was his conclusion. Then a doctor came up and gave a speech. His intent was also to deny the existence of God. I am an expert in anatomy. Numerous times I've dissected people's bodies and cut open people's chests, but I did not see their soul. No matter how many times I've conducted brain surgery, I was unable to observe the existence of the soul which God spoke about. 
If there is no such thing as a human soul, doesn't it prove that God, who is invisible, does not exist either? They spoke exactly like those, described as the foolish in Psalms chapter 14. All the people who gathered and listened to the lectures applauded and agreed with the views of the speakers, saying, that is so true. At the end of the lecture, they opened the floor for questions, asking the audience to share their opinions. Since the presentations of both speakers were persuasive and well supported by scientific evidence, no one raised their hand. Right at that moment, an elderly woman came up to the podium and said, I would like to ask a question to the astronomer. With the telescope that you have, can you see the wind? The astronomer answered, Wind is invisible. How can I see the wind? So, how is it that you are trying to look for Almighty God with a telescope that cannot even capture the wind? At the very least, you should have a telescope that allows you to see the wind. Only then may you be qualified to discuss whether God exists or not. Don't you think so? Hearing this, the astronomer blushed at her comment. Then, she asked the doctor, Doctor, by any chance, are you married? The doctor answered, Yes, I am. When she asked if he had children, he said yes. Do you love your wife and your children? She asked. Yes, I do. Do you truly love them? Yes, I truly love them. Then, the love that you have for them, is it in your heart or in your head? Or is it in your mouth? Wherever it may be, please take out your love and show it to us. She showed him a small knife, saying, Could you please show us where it is? Through the wisdom of the elderly woman, many who thought that God did not exist changed their point of view. This story is an actual event that took place after World War II. Everyone, even through the example of the tiny ant parasite, can we understand that God is truly living? By observing how God administers the microscopic world, we can certainly understand the mighty power of God the Creator. Can't we? Truly, our God is magnificent and powerful. The Almighty God came to earth 2,000 years ago. Even though He had all the authority and power to punish the wicked and to give faith to those who did not believe, he humbly put on the flesh and came to the land of Israel with the name Jesus. Let's go to Hebrews chapter 2, verse 6. But there is a place where someone has testified, What is man that you are mindful of him, the son of man that you care for him? How was he made? You made him a little lower than the angels. You crowned him with glory and honor and put everything under his feet. In putting everything under him, God left nothing that is not subject to him. Yet at present, we do not see everything subject to him. But we see Jesus, who was made a little lower than the angels, now crowned with glory and honor, because he suffered death, so that by the grace of God, he might taste death for everyone. We came to the earth being clothed in the flesh because of our sins. However, God, who is without sin, had to come in the flesh, being made with even less power than that of the angels. Many said, God should be able to do anything, like fly through the sky, and many other things that no human can do. 
Only then can we believe that He is God. Everyone, what was the reason Jesus came to the earth? Wasn't it to save us, granting us the forgiveness of our sins? We are sinners from heaven who could not help but suffer the punishment of eternal death in hell. Taking pity on these wretched sinners, God put on the flesh to save us. God willingly left all His power and glory behind, being made lower than the angels to come down to this earth. Let's continue with Hebrews chapter 2, verse 14. Since the children have flesh and blood, what did He share in? He too shared in their humanity. In other words, He put on the flesh so that by His death, He might destroy him who holds the power of death, that is the devil, and free those who all their lives were held in slavery by the fear of death. For surely it is not angels he helps, but Abraham's descendants. For this reason, he had to be made like his brothers in every way, in order that he might become a merciful and faithful high priest in service to God, and that he might make atonement for the sins of the people. Because he himself suffered when he was tempted, he is able to help those who are being tempted. Since the children have flesh and blood, he came to earth, sharing in their humanity to destroy the work of the devil. Although he is God, who has magnificent power in heaven, he had to temporarily diminish his power to be less than that of the angels and his position to be lower than the angels. He did all this in order to save us. For this reason, Christ was ridiculed and crucified on the cross, suffering the pain of the flesh. He was even falsely accused of leading the Nazarene sect. Yet he still went from town to town, seeking for all his children who truly wanted to repent and hear the voice of God. Through the Gospels of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, can't we see the appearance of our Father, who earnestly preached on the earth to deliver his voice to mankind? Let's take a look at Hebrews chapter 9. Hebrews chapter 9, verse 27. Just as man is destined to die once, and after that to face judgment, so Christ was sacrificed once to take away the sins of many people, and He will appear how many times? A second time. Not to bear sin, but to bring salvation to those who are waiting for Him. In order to save His loving children in Zion, He came a second time. This was not an easy decision to make. Everyone rejected, mocked, ridiculed, persecuted, and they ultimately crucified him. It was not easy to come again to the place where he was treated so harshly. Even though our father and mother were ridiculed and persecuted by the wicked, it was not because they were powerless. We must correctly understand our God. Our Father and Mother, our God Elohim, who have magnificent and awesome power. Yet they hid it all in the flesh by coming to this earth. We should never forget the fact that they had to walk this path because of the grievous sins that we committed in heaven. This is why God revealed His revelation to Apostle John letting us know that only those who are guided by the Spirit and the Bride can return to heaven. Let's go to Revelation chapter 22. Revelation chapter 22, verse 17. The Spirit and the Bride say, Come, and let him who hears say, Come. Whoever is thirsty, let him come, and whoever wishes, let him take the free gift of the water of life. Since the Spirit and the Bride say, Come to me, we should seek and come to our father and mother. You and I came to them and are now receiving the water of life freely through the truth of the new covenant. 
However, if we think, but I personally think we may drift away from God's redemption plan. Isn't that why the Bible teaches us about obedience to God's word? To save us, the Spirit and the Bride were made lower than the angels and came down to the earth. They willingly put on the flesh in order to teach us the way of salvation. How amazing is their grace and how beautiful is their love for us. We should never take their sacrifice for granted, thinking, they did it because they are God. Rather, let us be reminded that father and mother had such great determination only to save us sinners. I earnestly ask everyone to follow the path that our God has shown us so that we can receive a rich welcome into the eternal kingdom of heaven. By this, I would like to conclude today's sermon. Thank you very much.